Hi, I'm Sportster Paul. Today we got a broken Bose Lifestyle Model 20 uh, stereo, integrated stereo. It's got a disc player in it. Displays dead. You can see stuff on the internet. There's capacitors that go I bad. Believe oh, first thing, you just pry up this little, nothing tells you that it'll open. And then you go right here, and hopefully the uh, six discs will pop out. <clears throat> it's one of these haunted units. It makes buzzes and noises and all kinds of stuff. There's the uh, disc cartridge. Let's see. So it's got CDs in here, six CDs. So we can set that aside. We won't need that. We just want to get this display working. So if I can believe the internet, we can close this back down. And you just pry this thing. You just get rude with it. You get underneath here. There's, oh, hey, that came up easier than I thought. Okay, let's go on this side. I'm using a putty knife. I wonder if Barbara got into this. Okay, in addition to the putty knife, I've got a gasket scraper. Gasket scrapers are great. Okay, this one is, has broken off. The, the, it's not broken off. The, the glue has come loose. Hey, warn you about that. We'll glue that back when we put this thing together. Let's get into this one. I was trying to get the, uh, the knife under it. See, people who don't use screws and that. Okay, this one came out. That's good. I supposedly one back here too. Oh, good. That one came out. This is going better than I expected. Then pry. All right. So off it comes. You can see there's these little tree thingies here. Here, here, here. Hopefully our little flip camera can see it. Here's the one that, that stayed in. The glue uh, debonded. So that's why, uh, that's why we have super glue. So this comes off. Uh, th you can see the disc player is uh, spring mounted. It's rubber loaded. The board that's bad is, I believe, down in this area. So it's not trivial. There's screws to take off and misery to, to deal with. Okay, so now we got our number two Phillips screwdriver. Oh. It looks like you just pry this cover here. Looks like you just get rude with it and pry it off. Yes, hey, this is called incompetence when you design stuff like. Yeah, um, I wish there's little hooks on the top. So it looks like the right way to do it, if there can be a right way when stuff snaps together. The hooks are here. It looks like you do go to the top edge and just pry it back. All right. More incompetence. Oh, I forgot to bring a little tray. So three screws. One screw here. Put that there. Uh, I think there's a screw right here. The internet videos that, there's two internet videos that discuss this, and I'm not happy with either of them. Uh, let's see. The black plastic supposed to come up. I have. Here's the way to finally figure out the way to take it out. You pry like this, and up it comes easy. I may have forgotten those uh, to get that black plastic top off. You put a, there. There's two holes or four holes here, two on each side. You put a straight slot down, and then pry it in, and that pulls this little hooky thing away and lets you come up. So see big giant hooks that, that plunge down. That's what these two openings here are for big giant hooks to go down and mess with everything. All right, well, now let's get back to draining the swamp that we were working with. This is all rubber loaded since we have this cable off. What I see on the internet is this mess just picks up. The whole thing just picks up. Of course, it won't work for me. I see the spring finally. Okay, we'll put that up here. Yippee. Four little springs. You know where those are going to end up. Okay, finally. And then there's this. This is the RCA input jacks. It's kind of pushing out. See, nothing is straightforward. See, when, when, when incompetent industrial designers decide, oh, we're not going to use screws to hold stuff together, then everything is a puzzle. There's a tiny little tab at the base of the circuit board. Now, these connector-looking devices, as Dave Barry might say, I think they're just hard-soldered in. I don't think they're connectors. I don't think you're ever meant to pull that off. 
you're supposed to have this little dangly pigtail, another design incompetence. Take a little straight slot screwdriver. I'll throw some pictures in here. Um, and you go down, there's a little tab at the base, and you push that tab down. Then you can rotate this out like that in this direction. Let's see. Okay, now I can't do it. There we go. See, and then once you can rotate it, then you can pull it straight out, and life is good. And then this thing comes off. Hooray! All right. More snap together buffoonery. Uh, I can see it. Oh, yeah, well, I guess I did something. Okay. Pulled it back, pulled it towards the inside of the unit, pull it up. So at least we're getting rid of the bigger stuff. Let's get our little stuff in. Maybe it's all these capacitors. Still, I've got the wrong size, but maybe the, if the lead spacing is the same and the values are the same. Barbara's smart. I think she got the right ones. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, this is just the goofiest construction. This is as bad as car stereos. All right, so we'll yank this out. No power. Now I'll go get the Metcal, the soldering iron stuff. And unlike all those internet videos, I'll show you how to replace these capacitors. Make sure we have the right value. Electrolytic capacitors, which is these little can types, they are polarized. You can't put them in either way. Then you'll blow stuff up. They actually literally will explode. That's why you always wear safety glasses when you power stuff on the first time. Uh, these, well, we'll see. They are different size slightly, but that doesn't... As technology's improved, capacitors have gotten a little smaller, and these are physically smaller. We'll figure out, we've got plenty of them, we'll figure out if we can stick all of these in, and we will see if we can do this trick of powering it up ahead of time. I'm going to go get the soldering iron and the solder sucker and the solder wick and show you the different ways you can replace these uh, capacitors down here. All right? Okay, finally we're to the point. We've got a pan of ice. You've got to have a way to hold this stuff, trying to work on it while sliding around. It's, it's nice the way the heights work out. The, the board that I have to work on is in the jaws of the pan of ice by the Teflon jaws. They have a little kit. Uh, the capacitors are here. I'm going to take one out, check the value. Hopefully the lead spacing and values of this are, the, are correct. They, Barbara and Doug gave me that. Okay, there's a... Metcal soldering iron. Many consider it to be the best. Uh, two ways to two ways to remove a, a through hole soldered component. A solder sucker like this. Let's see if we can put it. In. So you you press down. You hear a click. Then this little release thing. Piston goes up. Sucks the solder out of the hole. Traditional, works pretty good. They used to actually pop so people would hold them by their eyes and get blinded. Now the modern design is they come back out so you, so you can't get whacked by it. The other way is solder braid, like a braided copper with uh, flux on it. I should have brought a pit flux pen, but oh, nobody's perfect. That's what happens when you're working in the studio, not the lab. Different uh, thicknesses for the, the various solder wicks, solder braid, if you will. So I got that there. I'm going to try. The other thing I didn't check. Yeah, we got a pretty good tip here. So it's charged up. We're going to do these two right here. Moving a little on me. Let's tighten it up. Uh, not good, not bad. Let's see. It might be time for the magnifier again. Boy, life's easy when you can see stuff, I tell you. It's like the iron isn't getting hot enough, to tell you the truth. Maybe we've got some Metcal issues. These are into a ground plane, so the heat gets taken away.
No, nope, ain't gonna get it. Is Metcal on? Yeah. Let's turn the Metcal off. Back. Now I got the Metcal tips. See all of these tips here. Whoopee. So I got. I took out the little thin one. Put in this really big fat one. So hopefully that'll throw a little more heat into this thing. Uh, I will, you know, I'm spoiled by being able to see stuff. So let's use this. Let's see if we can put a little bit more heat now. Uh -huh. Let's try this. I actually got it. Well, maybe the solder sucker is. I have friends who say the old-fashioned solder sucker is the way to do things. So now, got it like, depends where the leads are bent, right, for where you come in on it. So here, patience is a virtue. <clears throat> Make sure it gets good and hot. If I remember right, the tip of this solder sucker has got Teflon on it, too, so it doesn't melt. Although some guys actually like the little melting. If you melted a notch in it, I'll be danged. How about that? You can see there's a little disc of solder here that came loose. That kind of crap, you got to be very careful because if that gets into something. So now that I bumped it, it's into something. That's typical. All right. Now the trick is you put a it won't come out yet. It's, it's soldered on the side, but you can get heat to the wire itself. There, see, it, it loosened the wire. The, most of the solder's out of the hole, but the wire's still stuck to the side of the hole, so now you've got to reheat it with most of the solder out. One's broken loose. See, this is why you need... Okay. At this point, since one side's broken loose, and <clears throat> although I didn't bring some good, we can straighten this wire out because it looks tough enough. Okay. So now the wire is straight. And <clears throat> now you can just hopefully tug on the. Uh, Okay, out it comes. And it is 50 volts, 100 microfarads. And Barbara got us. She's really smart. I'm pretty sure she's got the right ones. Okie dokie. And, ooh, it's a high temperature. 100 microfarads. 50 volts. What did I say this one was? Yep, there you go. Hopefully I can zoom in on that. I'll take some pictures. Um, the new ones, these are much closer in size, so we're pretty cool. Now here's the trick, and I was stupid because I didn't uh, note the polarity of this. Hopefully... <laughs> Before I pulled it out, let's, the board ha will have something on there to show. And of course, everything has to be some symbolism that no one understands. You could see, especially if this flip camera is still working, yay! Uh, you can see there's, they draw a line here. Uh, what that's supposed to mean? Well, we'll never know. Ah, we look at the other ones, where the line means. That's the minus sign of the capacitor. So for C20, the first one, or no, I'm sorry, C28, you got to have these machinist goggles or you can't see. For C28, matter of fact, it looks like all the minuses of the caps point out, you know, point away from the, from the main board. So here we go. Here's the minus. We start that one. Am I even in the... Uh, 
view of the camera, I hope so. And go there. Don't, uh, don't try to get them right up against the board. All that does is uh, bring too much heat into the capacitor when you solder it. So we'll get it close to the board. We'll bend the two leads so nothing goes anywhere. We'll straighten this mess back up, put it back in the vise. For some reason, I feel like I should do these one at a time, but I probably should be removing them. It just feels good to know I got the right thing, right place. We verified what the, the goofy symbology, God forbid there's a plus and a minus sign, right? Let's put a bar across half of the silk screen. <sighs> these are my people. All right, next. We had good luck with this solder sucker. Rather than solder them one at a time, I'm in the mood to remove them all. Bring my machinist mask down. Get this here. A lot of heat. Be really patient. Just keep the heat to it. And then in one motion, Yes. Now you got to go, as you get older, you should try to be more and more ambidextrous. Got to go in with my left hand because the way the lead's bent over, the iron's best off coming in like this. See, there's another little piece of solder that came out of the solder sucker. Watch those. They will screw you up. Put them over there. Okay, now here. And just patience, because there's a ground plane. It's sucking the heat out of this soldering iron, sucking, cooling off the solder. So you just take your time. You'll be happy about that. Okay. And, oh, that worked out great. Okay. Now maybe mess with this a little bit to get the. Uh, where are we? Okay. We're, so now hopefully, by being really careful, we'll be able to. That one out. Kind of using the iron to bend it. And this time, <laughs> let's actually watch when it comes out so we can see. It's this one. Negative sign is up, up to the camera. I don't know how, it's probably down the way it's built. That comes out. Straighten these out, get them lined up. Okie dokie. And then like, you know, don't bring it down flush. Don't work that hard to ruin your Repair. Okay, next these two. This is this is a pain in the butt with the best soldering iron, Metcal's. Although my friend worked at Metcal for a while, he's not there anymore. Uh, he he said there are wellers that actually outperform. The, the secret is how fat the tip is, how much heat can get sucked out of the tip. So, not long slender tips kind of wedgy tips bring bring the heat back into the part. Okay, here's our two junk ones. We'll add these to our junk box when we're done. Okay, just right hand on one. Sometimes you actually add solder. You take some solder and glom it on and get the iron wet with the solder and it really gets the heat into these ground plane situations. How about that? I'm getting good at this. The way the, way the lead's bent, i got to go ambidextrous again. Push this off, maybe shake out any uh, loose solder. Oh, things are cooking now. The iron's nice. Metcals are supposed to heat up in seconds anyway, but this fat tip was a secret. How about that? So now the same thing. The, the wires are stuck to the wall, so you... Oops, there, that loose, loosened that one. And I think
think it came out. The other trick is you just keep the heat on it. Pull it out that way. Ugh. All right. See, you, know, you, you can't hold it and say, okay, it came out, negative stripe that way. Up to three. Thank you, Barbara. She's so smart. She's got the right parts. Okay. So, here we go. The, uh, this particular capacitor, the minus side is a shorter lead. Now, the internet said there's five of them. Oh, sure enough, there is. Then these two here. Uh, the, now, all of the caps are probably bad or going bad. They say these five will fix the display. Let's hope. Otherwise, maybe all of them. And it's not too hard to troubleshoot. You can just put, you don't even need an oscilloscope. You can put a meter across it. And if there's AC, you know, set the meter to AC and hopefully an RMS meter, but probably any meter would work. And if there's, a, you know, two volts, if there's too much ripple on that, it's not working and it needs a new one. All right. So another visual check here and here. This is going better than I had any right to expect. Oops, now I'm confused. Don't take the wrong ones out. Okay, these two. Still recording? I hope so. We had more dead battery grief. Oh, there's actually a red light on the... Uh, Flip camera. <clears throat> Hopefully the flip will help. So that's this one here. This Metcal's working the way I'd expect now, the way I want. Just lots of heat. Take your time. You know, it, it mushed in right away, but the more heat you put in this, the more solder will come out. Then same thing, because the way the leads are bent, I gotta go ambidextrous. Might be a good time to uh, come in this way. All right, and da, 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 take your time. Count to 10, do something. Check your phone, modern times. Oh, that was a good one. All right, same deal. <clears throat> Here. This one's loose. Bend the lead a little bit. See, minus sign on this side. That's the fourth one. And Barbara got lots of extra parts. God, I love her. All right, so. This goes in here. I decided not to start soldering them in right away because I might get confused and take one out that I just put in. You can usually put in a smaller capacitor as long as the voltage rating is right. You can almost always put in a bigger value. So these physically bigger capacitors might actually replace some of the smaller ones. In theory, we shouldn't have to do that. If we can trust the internet, <laughs> then uh, let go. All right. Okay, bend this out of the way. Lots of Lots of heat. Doo, doo, doo. Seeing stuff. Plenty. There's, the studio has pretty good light. I got real spotlights in the in the lab. Oh yeah, mama, this is working great. Ambi up. Actually, looks like a little check to make sure it's still recording in this. Oh, I didn't charge it. See, just, just an excuse to keep a little extra heat on it, that's all. I scarred up the uh, solder mask a little bit. Nobody's perfect. 
let's put this back here. This should be the last capacitor we need to mess with. Did it right. Okay. <laughs> you get spoiled using this machinist magnifier. Same deal. Negative signs in the pinch of our finger. Five old caps. Like anything, once you get into it, it the actual fix itself doesn't take that much time. Uh, uh, I'm trying to make it so you can see. The negatives are all pointing this way, that way. So the negative is the shorter, so that means the longer one goes in first, and in it goes. Okay, same deal. Don't. Don't worry about getting it right up against the board. Okay. Next, clean solder. I got a roll of solder there. I got a roll of solder here. Nice small, I think this is 20 thousandths diameter. Smaller solder is happier solder. So uh, it's like measure white twice, cut once, carpenter's rule. Look twice, solder once. Okay, that looks good. Kind of using the corner of this big fat wedge might not be the smartest thing I ever did, but don't accuse me of intelligence. Okay. The, the flux, the, the, the center of the solder has a little flux in it. And that's cool for a lot of reasons. Of course, the last solder joint is always the pain. Okay. One looks a little bit cold. Get back in there. Yeah, that one looks better. That's the other thing about a magnifier. It helps you, uh, helps you see stuff. A little bit of solder splatter, stuff like that. You don't want to leave that on the board. Safety glasses in addition. I think we're done with the soldering. I think. Like I say, it could always be a turn off the iron. Uh, I didn't bring snips for the leads. I'll, I'll go get those. OK, we're back. Brought two kinds of side cutters. This one's conventional side cutter. This one is a cool guy flush cutter. It's, it's meant to come down on things. Uh, they're both nice. That's the benefit of being an engineer, you get all this cool stuff collected. All right. Always, now you can tell when you're snipping these, the wire goes flying, really have safety glasses on. And try not to let them go flying wild. If you can, if you can hold on to them, I'll. That one hit the ground. I didn't see where it went. Okay, satisfying. Once again, ambidextrous. Okay, so let's get all these little leads collected. Put them here with the old capacitors for our one day they'll be recycling little chunks of copper like this. But for now, I think we can hit the, uh, uh, 
All right, another quick inspection. Look for, uh, you know, sloppy. This isn't the best work I've done. So one side of the capacitor goes to the ground plane. There's, the solder should kind of just flow out onto the big plane. But others are just a, a lead. And hopefully I haven't shorted with my ham hand, big giant soldering iron. Haven't shorted any of those out. It looks okay. All right, now we're in the joy of victory, agony of defeat phase. <clears throat> Move the device out. I do wish I understood what was top and bottom. I guess this is the top. There's radio components, little metal cans. This is the power. Let's get that power. In theory, it should work. Here's power. Apply power. Oh my God. Joy of victory. It's 96.5. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. We'll point it at the flip camera. You know, maybe you can see it working there. Point it at the upside camera. It's very hard to see. Let me get that. Uh, I'm really not exhibiting the best work habits, but I don't know if that helps. May or may not be able to see it. It's not terribly bright, but it's there, you know. Okay, so it was pretty disappointing. The display was still dim after the, the five capacitors. You could barely see it with the frosted or black plastic cover over it. More internet research. There's a C27 that's on the top right here, capacitor number six. Replace that. And then while I was there, there were two smaller diameter, smaller um, 47 microfarad. Uh, I replaced those because I had a whole bag. You saw that whole bag I had of, of uh, these larger caps. So two other capacitors down here. So all these caps are new down here. The big one is the same. But I measured it. I put a voltmeter across it. And thankfully, there's not a lot of ripple, but there was a ton of ripple on C27 and a couple of these others. And a capacitor is supposed to take that ripple out. I touched capacitor to the back, an extra one, identical one. Display got a little brighter. So what I did, it's a little Mouseketeers. You can probably see it right here. I took, I desoldered C27 up here on top, this, this one and soldered two extra capacitors, triple the capacitance, and kind of piggied those back so it's a little triangular thing. Here, let me take a little picture. You can hopefully see what I'm talking about. If I can get it to focus, click. There. So a little Mickey Mouse having three capacitors. Uh, kept the leads attached. You know, I bent them, soldered, and left the leads there so the, the solder wouldn't remelt. And hopefully it'll take a little heat out of the whole mess. And then soldered this triple capacitor in. I still have a lot of ripple on at least two more uh, capacitors, these bottom side ones. But when I touch capacitor to the leads, you know, from the outside here, had the leads folded over so I could touch it, no change. At least now the display is bright enough that with the black cover over it, you can read it. So I didn't want to have Doug and Barbara, and thank you, Barbara, for including all those extra capacitors. She gave me a whole bag of the proper value. Uh, I looked at some of the big caps. I didn't see uh, a lot of ripple other than here. It's bright now. So let's put it back together. Getting smarter every time, like always, hopefully for the last time. So we'll take the base. Get the base. We'll take the changer. Drop it down and, oh no, put four springs in. Spring. Oops, spring, spring, spring. Let me pick up little stakes, little things. Where can you see it here? There and there, hopefully. And, and there should be long stakes here. They got broken off. They're, they're on, the long stakes are here. Hopefully you can see them. They're broken off here. Maybe Barbara got in this thing. She said she tried to fix it, which is you appreciate it when someone doesn't just ask for help without at least trying. Uh, that seems okay. Uh, maybe I'm doing this in the wrong order. 
Okay, now the electronic. Oh, yeah, I am, for a matter of fact. I know that for a fact. Take this out. Okay, now, messing with this thing over and over and over, I learned that there's slots and tabs here. Let's get my lovely 3M reading glasses on. So I make sure that the two little tabs that are part of these sideboards are in the little slot in the display board. That gets all that correct. Get this mess over here. Uh, and this is our next goofiness. Get the whole thing started. Do that trick where <clears throat> this thing goes in. God, I hate, I hate working like this. This is just so savage. Okay, and then when you swing it down, I still can't get it. It's it's the most frust frustrating thing I've ever done in my entire life. Thank you, Amor Bose. Hope that MIT helped you somewhere. It sure didn't help on this. Oh, another slot. Good. So now, see, every time, you got to do it five times before you see what's going on. Everything, all their goofy slot in the slot in the slot seems to be correct now. Um, the goes back here. This thing. There. Had to twist it a little. So this pops in back here. We got Emar goofiness for this part. I think, does it just come down? No, that doesn't seem right, does it? That it pinches this wire? That doesn't seem right. Let's, uh, it goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Once again, up this mess comes, you know, it actually does seem like it's in the right spot. Of course, in display, because this is a really Mickey Mouse way to build something. <laughs> MIT. Yeah, right, Amar. Uh, slots are in. Oh, now I felt it on this. Ah, pop on here. Oh, okay. So maybe <laughs> this is just so Mickey Mouse. And then this goes back here. This goes here. Fold that. This is just normal goofiness. Normal. I still have. I mean, it just kind of lays in here. It's, it's like. See, but it's not. Oh well. So get this flat ribbon folded where it belongs. This thing's where it belongs. This thing, Mickey Mouse as it is. It's obviously, when this black plastic thing comes on top, it's going to captivate everything. Okay, springs. Oh, lost a spring. <laughs> See, this is why it's exponential, the incompetence, when you design something poorly. Where were we? All right. And this thing. This thing drops in. I heard that dinky noise of something falling where it's not supposed to go. Spring seated. Spring seated. Okay, this is goofy again. I guess it just kind of half snaps, half falls, half whatever. Then this, the, the, the master of goofiness, kind of goes in here. Oh, wait, I'm trying to think. This comes in. Oops, 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 oops. 
this master of goofiness. This is not good engineering. I'm sorry. Sorry, Bose. No highs, no lows. That's Bose. All righty. Then we take this. Oh, oh, yeah, the total goofiness. The goofiest thing human beings have ever done. Make sure that the little twirl thing is pointed down because there's a pocket down here that's supposed to accept that. And it just kind of falls in there. The kind of mouseketeers. This, if I remember, goes like this. Yes. What's going on here? Okay, so let's get close now. That seemed to seat. Oh, no. This goes through a slot here. Everything's a puzzle when you have MIT people. This goes here. They're so much smarter than us. This goes here. This goes here. I've got to admit, some involved. This goes down. Okay, hopefully that's correct. I can see that. This is up high. This goofy thing seems to be in position. It went together nicer because of, of those two tabs in the display, little slots in the display closed up. There's a magnet that holds this. You just pry it up and it goes up. I may have this spring backwards. I think I do. I think I do. Because the spring, you can see, is kind of interfering on this boss. So let's do this. Pull it off. Turn it 90 or 180 degrees. God, my eyesight's so bad. All righty. And come on up. There we go. A little less binding right here on this boss. I think that's happier. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to go. Uh, no way of knowing. Snap together, pop together. Oops. We may have to adjust this magnet business here. Loosen it. Snug it back up. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, loosen it. Come on, move it way as far forward as it goes, because that's where. Ah, uh, yeah. There's a little paper over the magnet so it doesn't make a clank. Of course, if it doesn't stay down, Mickey Mouse, but acceptable. All right. Uh, I think we're going to live with this. Get the screws. Oh, 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 I made a mistake. There is, for some reason, this little, it came out when I was messing with stuff. There's this little grounding, like maybe this is a conductive black plastic. And I'm trying to remember how it went in. You should have seen trying to move this thing constantly popping open under its own weight. So, once again, our machinist magnifier. Oh, I know what this is. It, uh, it does go into there. This picks up the metal cover right here so that it does ground this and make a ground plane, probably for electromagnetic noise, maybe for the radio. Who knows? Screws. Okie doke. Screws. Cover the the little uh, the, the little hooky 
thing on the top. There's hooks on the side, hooks on the top. It's, it's quite a snap together festival here. I guess that's it. Okay, then here, I notice there's a little metal thing. Probably just picks up like this. And so we've got our Loctite super glue. I leave them in the package now just so I know. I cut the bubble a little back so I can get this. Um, where's our putty knife? Here it is. Should have done this. I figure just in the auto business, they get weaker and weaker if you, you know, you can only do it a few times. Let's try the gasket scraper and. Boy, no wonder. Okay, so we get this thing out. Just so it's. And get it started. I want it a little high. Hopefully, the super glue will work. Got our little grounding thing. That's another easy to forget. Where's my super glue? Never use too much of this. It's lack of oxygen that makes it work. So this is, I think, a gel. I really like this precision pen because I usually I need a little jet drill to, to drill it out. <laughs> Got a little on my thumb. All right. So let's get this here. Take that. This goes up. I can see I'm causing myself some grief with the uh, audio here. So down, up. I don't like it, but that's their design, not mine. Staying down. I forgot to bring the power supply out. I'm going to go get that. And then we'll uh, uh, show you. Hopefully, we'll be able to read it with those three capacitors kind of hacked in. All right. I'll be back in a second. It works. Let me see if I can get a good source here. Uh, the radio. It's not bright. I got to tell you, it's still pretty dim. Hopefully you can see that. It's not easy to read, but Doug and Barbara will be able to set the, uh, set the radio station and do stuff like that. If they pry off this cover, then it's a bit brighter. See if we can pick it up here. I guess you can see that there, huh? Okay, the little hook's on the top. Everything's a puzzle. Can you see that? Probably not. Uh, just barely. Right. Obviously a lot brighter there. So we'll let Doug and Barbara decide if they want to customize it by popping that thing off. Me, I'm finished. Time to box this up and send it to Boulder Creek. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your patience. Sorry it didn't go as clean. It never goes as clean. I assume that's what you want to see, how miserable everything is. Uh, I can put the disc. Here's the, don't forget, when we, I brought it out. I was visiting California from Florida here. I brought the thing out and we forgot the wall wart. And, and even though Barbara gave me those capacitors, I set them down on the coffee table and left those back. Okay. Insert this way. Well, thank you, Amar. There are some things you do right. Close that. Oh, I hear buzzing and zinging, and hopefully I didn't break that. I'm not going to uh, try to troubleshoot this anymore. The display works. We're done. See you next time.